welcome to another video and to the Porsche 911 Carrera 4 GTS. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably not thinking another 911. What could possibly be different about this one? Well, every 911 is a precision instrument designed for a really particular purpose. And if you look really closely, the eagle-eyed amongst you will spot that this particular 911 is yellow. And it is a well-known, proven and established fact that the yellow 911s are much faster than any other colour. But I jest. This is the GTS and it is really, really special because the clue is in the name. This car sits between the Carrera S models and the motorsport inspired models such as the GT3. It's almost a motoring cliche to call it the sweet spot of the range, but that's kind of what this is. It sits between the two. The idea is that it combines all of those great daily driver characteristics of cars such as the Carrera S with some of the cool motorsport inspired features of cars such as the GT3, which are more occasional track cars. Another way to think about the GTS is like this. If you were to venture onto the Porsche configurator and configure your ideal Porsche, the car you would probably end up with is a car with a spec that's very similar to the GTS, but with two key differences. The first difference is that that combination of options that you would specify actually comes as standard on the GTS and at a much lower price. In addition, the GTS comes with certain really, really cool features that you actually cannot specify on a normal, GT, a normal Carrera S. For example, center locking wheels, which are really, really cool. So this is a really, really different car. It's a very special 911. And for me, the key question with this car, particularly in this spec, because it is a four wheel drive model, is how close it comes to the Turbo S. The Turbo S is my favorite 911. And for me, it's the perfect 911. It is the 911 that does everything. It is ballistically, unbelievably quick and unbelievably luxurious and quiet. So if this car can come anywhere even close to the Turbo S, it will be one of the best 911s that money can buy. So let's take a quick look around the car, some of the cool features, and then take it for a drive. So styling wise, how is the GTS different to a normal Carrera S? Well, first of all, at the front here, we have the sport design package, just actually continued right along the side with the side skirts and also with the rear. It just adds an added um, tone of aggression to the front apron. In addition, we have these darker tinted LED lights and LED lights are actually standard on the GTS model. At the side then, the side is where it gets actually quite interesting and this is where it differs quite a bit from a normal Carrera S. And let's start first of all with these centre locking wheels. So in here, I mean first of all, just how technical does this look in here between carbon ceramic brakes, centre locking wheels, it looks like something from an F1 grid. Starting with the wheels first of all, obviously centre locking 20 inch on the front, 21 inch on the rear. This is something you cannot specify on an ordinary Carrera S, but is actually standard on cars such as the GTS and indeed the Turbo S. Talking about the Turbo S as well, these brakes are actually derived from the Turbo S and they are carbon ceramic. And that's interesting for three reasons. First of all, brake dust. Much less brake dust with carbon ceramic brakes. Second of all, in terms of performance, so Porsche steel brakes are fantastic. You do not need any more with daily driving or indeed with track driving. But if you're doing a lot of hard track sessions and you don't want the brakes to fade after intense track work, you will go for the carbon ceramics. Interestingly as well, the carbon ceramics, often the trade-off with that level of durability in terms of the brakes was the fact that in day-to-day -day kind of traffic driving, carbon ceramic brakes were often quite grabby um, a, few, a few years ago. Now I have been in all sorts of really intricate, tri tricky traffic situations in and around towns and places like the city of Bath where really narrow streets, these brakes perform and feel just exactly as normal brakes feel and they offer immense stopping power. The third reason why you might want carbon ceramic brakes, particularly on a car with racing yellow paint, is obviously brakes that are carbon ceramic come with yellow brake calipers and they look really cool with the paint. Also along the side of the GTS, you will notice that this car is fitted with PASM, which is Porsche Active Suspension Management. Why is this interesting? Well, obviously it enables all sorts of clever, you know, wizardry with the suspension. So in terms of keeping the car super, super level as it goes through corners, the dampers will obviously firm up. Whereas in kind of bumpy road driving, it will offer a degree of compliancy, which is really nice as well. But most interestingly, from an aesthetic point of view, 
it also lowers the car by 10 millimeters. And PASM is just an example of one of the driving aids, like Sport Chrono, like Porsche torque vectoring, that is actually standard on the GTS model because of the special car it is. It is the car that is supposed to combine livable day-to-day -day drivability with some of the motorsport track-oriented driving features such as PASM, Sport Chrono, etc. Also on the GTS, you will notice the decal. This is the type of thing that I would add to a Porsche. I like decals on cars. I'm surprised Porsche actually adds to a GTS because that right there adds weight. So it's at the rear of the Porsche 911 GTS that things get particularly interesting. First of all, because this is actually the model with the longest model designation. It has the most number of letters and characters, which is a fun fact. And this is actually mirrored beautifully by the Porsche GB PR Reg, which is at 911, four wheel drives. Those two go together very, very nicely. Also at the GTS, um, we have sports exhaust. And the sports exhaust is key to this car. It's one of the key defining features. And it isn't the same as the sports exhaust on the regular Carrera S. It's actually tuned differently than that model and sounds even more fruity. It's here with kind of really, really darkened um, black tips, which look awesome, and complements of the black badging and black details, details that GTS models are known for. One of the coolest aspects of the back of 911 is of course the light bar, particularly at night. That looks really, really cool. And on the GTS, it actually has exclusive design taillights, which means that these are kind of smoked out and just adds that really motorsport vibe of the car. The spoiler is obviously retractable as well, moves up and down. And because the GTS is fitted with the sport design package, it has a slightly differently designed um, rear valance and diffuser here, which obviously is functional as well because Porsche doesn't do just uh, form. It's it's always functional um, in addition. Also, given this is a 911, back here we have an engine, which isn't always a given these days, given the move to electrification. So in this car, we have a 480 brake horsepower engine, which is 30 brake horsepower more than the 991 generation GTS, and actually 30 brake horsepower more than the regular Carrera S. So an incredible engine, six cylinder, flat six, turbocharged as per the, the normal models, but just amped up and tuned up a little bit more to give extra added performance. So to the interior of this new 911 GTS, well, it feels incredibly special in here for a number of reasons. First of all, this is the full GTS interior package. So with that, you get this beautiful matte carbon and so much Alcantara, which really gives the car that GT3 vibe. This car also will come with, as part of that package, some beautiful contrasting stitching. The stitching here is actually in crayon, and you can see that by the GTS embroidered on the headrest as well. Then we have the standard Sport Chrono fitted on the GTS model as well, and you can tell that by the lap timer clock right in center of the dash here. But those are things that tell you kind of why the GTS is different from a standard Carrera. But I have to describe just how great a 911 Carrera feels. It's just, it's the positioning of every control. The driving position is so low, rev counter dead ahead. Everything feels so solidly put together and so well made. And interestingly as well, it's a really cocooning cabin. So although it's quite a wide car, you can really see that width when you look in the, the mirrors either side, and you can see those wide haunches disappearing off into the distance. And it gives it a real supercar inspired feeling. This is, I guess, enhanced as well by the fact that this car is racing yellow. So looking out from a black interior to a yellow exterior really enhances the kind of supercar uh, feeling of the whole of the experience. 911s as well, they're just so beautifully finished inside. I really love, for example, these knurled controls and the beautiful new kind of PDK lever that you have on the 992 generation and the knurled buttons here as well. And just everything feels of such quality. Even these paddles here feel like nice and cold to the touch. And you know, the damping is perfect and it just feels like it's gonna last about a hundred years. Another thing to mention about the 911 is just how futuristic as well this generation of 911 appears, just in terms of the experience. 
So right in the middle we have, as tradition, I mean that perfect analog rev counter, but either side we have two TFT displays. These can be configured to, you know, display the standard kind of traditional five dial 911 lineup, or on the right hand side here, there are several options such as sat nav, trip computer, you know, vehicle settings. And in the GTS model in particular, there's something called a reduced display. So if I click this here, you can see that all of the five dials disappear. You're just left with the rev counter in the center, some really core driving information on the left and the right. For example, water temperature um, and you know time and the remaining ra range of fuel as well. So it's a really nice feature of the GTS. And again, it's just hinting at that performance um, aspect of the car and how close it is to that GT3 at the top of the range. Also, this GTS is actually fitted with a large TFT display like all 992 Carreras in the center. And it's actually been upgraded for the GTS. And this display, even before the upgrade, is one of the very best I've ever used. The graphics are so unbelievably crisp. It's just like your iPhone, if not even crisper. And it's just so responsive as well. But I really value actually the new layout. It, things are just a little bit more accessible than they would have been in the previous layout. For example, when you start the car, all you have to do is hit drive and straight away you're displayed with a menu of the core driving options selections you might want to take. So the list obviously would be sports exhaust, spoiler extended, start stop, chassis settings, and and drive mode so those five things are just so accessible so quickly literally turn the car on screen comes on hit car and it's tick 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 the whole way down it can be done so quickly without having to navigate i get a lot of, a lot of um, drop down menus also in terms of driving mode that can also be selected here via this rotary controller on the right hand side of the steering wheel and the steering wheel just feels so great to hold and even better when you're actually driving the car so what is the 911 GTS like to drive? Well, the very first thing that is this car's defining feature is its sounds. I mean, listen to that. That is absolutely incredible. It is also addictive. <laughs> Oh my gosh, 911s always sound good, but this GTS, they have absolutely nailed it. And that's because the exhaust of the GTS is actually tuned differently to the exhaust of other 911s. It also, a lack of or a reduction in the amount of sound deadening in the car lets more of that sound through. And that's why it just sounds so unbelievably <laughs> awesome. It's always been the case with GTS models, even if I cast my mind back to cars such as the 991 generation, they just blew me away with their sound, some of the nicest sounding six cylinder engines around. Speaking of that engine, it of course is a 3 litre, 480 brake horsepower, flat six turbocharged engine. So performance is certainly not wanting with a 0 to 60 time of 3.3 seconds, which is blisteringly quick. This PDK transmission is also incredible. The gear changes are just so quick. You will watch many reviews on YouTube and the car reviewer will more than likely tell you that what you need is the manual transmission. You don't. What you need is the PDK. Reason being, I have no doubt I have tried uh, Porsche's manual gearbox and it is incredible. It is one of the nicest gear changes, one of the slickest gear changes and one of the most engaging manual transmissions around. However, let's be real, this is supposedly a daily car and in the real world we have traffic. And this is where a PDK transmission comes into its own because there is no substitute for a car that can change gears on its own and also make you feel like a racing driver when you do that. It's also significantly quicker. It shaves some tenths of a second off the zero to 60 time and it's more fuel efficient. It is absolutely the way forward for a daily driver. That said, I would say a manual transmission really suits the more occasional Porsche cars. Cars such as the, for example, Cayman GT4 RS. Cars such as the Boxster Spider, for example. Cars such as the recently launched 911 Sport Classic. These all suit the manual transmission so well because you can really enjoy that undiluted driving experience. But to be honest, you don't need that, you know, every single day of the year and you certainly don't need it in traffic in London or any other large city or indeed in most parts of the UK. But that sound, it 
is just immense. It is so enjoyable and addictive. This GTS is also equipped with four-wheel drive and also four-wheel steering. Those two things combined are so important to me in a 911. The four-wheel drive just gives you that extra level of confidence in driving the car and the additional four-wheel steer then just makes it that more, much more agile and dialed into the corners. It's one of those things where you might think four-wheel steering doesn't really make a difference. It does and it is noticeable just the way this car will go around corners combine that with four-wheel drive and you have a car that is outrageously quick point to point in the real world and it's in the real world that this car is all about so in conclusion then what can we say about the Porsche 911 GTS well the GTS for me is always a special 911, not only because of its point in the range and the fact that it is that kind of midpoint car between the daily drivers and the GT models, but my first Porsche experience back in 2015 was actually at the Malaga launch of the GTS models. So they'll always have kind of a special place in my heart, so I'll always be kind of slightly biased towards them. But this car really lives up to its same. It's more impressive than I thought it would be for two reasons. First of all, the sound. I always knew this car was going to sound even better than the regular Carrera S, but it just sounds so good. It really does. That exhaust note is addictive to drive. The second point, and the really important one for me, is just how close this gets to that Turbo S in terms of appeal, drivability and luxury. Because although the Turbo S, in my opinion, is the best 911, it's also, exclusive models aside, the most expensive 911. So in a way, this car offers so much of that performance and so much of that daily drivability that it's such a great compromise between the two. Then add in the fact that this car offers all of those really cool motorsport features, which brings this car into line with cars such as the GT3. So it's like a daily driver D GT3. And that's really important. And it's particularly important with the 992 generation, because with this generation, the GT3 has moved beyond the daily driver car. And for those who are interested in the most extreme, raw, undiluted driving experience, there will be no substitute for a GT3 with a roll cage and a manual gearbox. And a GTS is not designed to appeal to that particular diehard customer, it's designed to be the daily driver one. And I mean, it, that's perfectly appropriate that the GTS is in that category and it's so well defined, as all Porsche models are. But as a car that offers a lot of the cool features of the GT3, with GT in its name, and with that level of da daily drivability, luxury, refinement, and that incredible sound, the GTS is an awesome package. Another great thing about the GTS is, of course, the fact that it is a relatively attainable Porsche. You can go into a dealer and you can order and buy one of these, whereas a car like the GT3 is so limited and difficult to get. It can be sometimes difficult to obtain. There's certainly a premium on some of the prices for the 992 GT3 already, whereas this car is just that bit more attainable. So so it's just an overall great package. I mean, it's a 911, it looks great, but it really, I'm so pleased that it blends all of those characteristics of GT3, Carrera S, and also even Turbo S, particularly in this spec with the four wheel drive and the four wheel steering in such a great livable daily package. I'm lucky enough to test many, many different cars, particularly Porsches and some really, really luxurious cars as well. And, but there are actually very few that you'd actually want to own necessarily. But this really is one of those cars that you actually can see yourself really aspiring to owning because it just fits into your daily life so well. So for all of those reasons, it more than lives up to its GTS reputation and name. And it's just a fantastic, well-rounded, all-purpose 911. But thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and of course the 911 GTS. Do subscribe and like this video because there's so much more exciting car counting to come right the way throughout the summer and for the remainder of the year. So looking forward to you joining us on that journey. But for now, goodbye and hope you enjoyed the video and I will chat to you soon.